Statement of Fusion 3 is released. I know you are busy, so I'm going to give you a summary right here. Yes, you should start using SD3. Can I use it day one? Yes, I'll show you where to download it, how to get started. Will it give me better results day one? Probably not. Needs fine tuning. Is it still worth using? Yes. Someone told me this model is bad, is it? Well, no, it's a medium sized 2B model compared to the 8B model. You will be fine and you probably won't need the 8B model until you get a, a better GPU. And I think most fine tunes will be made on the 2B model. Anyway, why is it better? Text, prompt understanding, 16 channel VAE. If you want to know more, keep watching. Oh, and you know, some more stuff. I'm clearly the superior model. People can't get enough of my anime art and all that amazing control net setup. Please, control net, I got that too, and also much higher resolution. Don't be silly, those control net Loras can match my 1.5 control nets, and I can do high resolution too with high res fixes and tile up scales, just to name a few. Ah, step aside, kids, you're outdated. I can do text, you know, letters that actually go together and make words. Let me spell it out for you. Bye bye. Who does words anyway? Exactly, can you even animate? Well, I'm not sure yet, but uh, I got prompt understanding. And better faces. And hands. Well, at least sometimes. No one can do hands. Yikes. Are you even fine-tuned? Well, no, not yet. But uh, I mean, the community will surely fix that. I have thousands of models and Loras, you'll never match that. I'm sure people will fine-tune me. I'm also safe to use, unlike some of you guys. What does that even mean? I'm all about unlimited control. Hi guys, I can do pretty images. So jokes aside, SD3 will probably outperform both 1.5 and SDXL. Will it do it day one? Mm, well, probably not, maybe not. Maybe. It's a starting point. I think we will need some fine tunes from the community to uh, see Stable Diffusion 3 excel and shine as much as possible. But there are some key architectural features where Stable Diffusion 3 really outshine other models. First, let's talk about the VAE. So the VAE used in previous models use a 4-channel VAE. Now you can go 4 channel, 8 channel, 16, 32, etc. You get the point. And Stable Fusion 3 uses a 16 channel VAE. And you can clearly see in this comparison image here, which I think is a great reference and showing the difference. And th this is just not on outputting an image, it's actually incorporated when you train the model. So as you are training the model, you will retain more detail and will be able to output more detail. Now, SD3 is a 1024 by 1024 pixel model, not to be confused with the previous one. So SD1.5 was trained for 512 by 512. SDXL was trained 1024 by 1024. The difference here though is that SD3 works well by doing 512 by 512. 12 images. This does not mean that it's a 512 model. This is a 1024 model that can be used in more sizes than previous. So this is good and especially for, for people that are not on a massive GPU machine. I mean I'm on a 4090 so I can generate you know a lot, not everything, but a lot. But many people are not able to, to run SDXL so having a model a better model that can run 512 by 512 and doing that faster and less resource intensive than SDXL. That's a, that's a huge deal for many people. And one of the reasons for that is that we are getting the, the medium model or the, the 2B model. So there is the full weight one, the 8B. For the majority of people, 2B will be fine. It's going to be great. Requirements are going to be much less than the SDXL. You're going to have a great time with it on, you know, most machines. The diminishing returns you get from the increased quality in 8B compared to the, the resources you require. I mean, the, the, the curve goes like and then it flattens out. There's the diminishing returns, right? So is 8B better? Well, yes, 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 it is. Will you need it? Probably not, at least right now. The majority of users will want to use the 2B one. 
because it's going to be faster to run. And if you eventually get the A to B one and you want to run it, sure, go for it. It's going to be slower. You're going to get a slight increase in quality where some areas are going to be higher quality than others. So, you know, it depends on what your end goal is. But right now, go for the 2B1. That's the one we have and uh, start fine tuning it because it's a great base. Just jumping back to the VE 16 channel thing, that's going to be a huge improvement. And if you start digging in the research paper of Stable Fusion 3 under the chapter improved autoencoders here, you can see here similar to uh, this research paper from 2023, we find that increasing the number of latent channels significantly boosts reconstruction performance. See table three. And table three is uh, this one here. Now it's not as pretty as the image we looked at before. Uh, but this, uh, the, these are, uh, a, this is a comparison for channel, eight channel, 16 channel, and the FID score here, which is something called the freshet inception distance. In, Freshet inception distance. The arrow indicates which is better. So a lower score is better. 16 channel clearly outperforms the other ones. Perceptual similarity. Also lower is better. It's almost twice as good as the four channel one. And in all the other data, it outperforms the other channels. You can keep reading here, but basically, you know, yada, yada, yada. Thus, models with increased capacity should be able to perform better for a larger, yada, yada, ultimately achieving higher image quality. We confirm this hypothesis in figure 10. Let's look at figure 10. And here's the channel 16 channel is the yellow one here. So here are a couple of images that I pulled from the research paper. And we're going to compare these to just mid journey, still be fusion XL and some W3 generations. Now it's not a fair comparison. Okay. I'll give you that because not everyone handles uh, the prompting in the same way. So using a prompt in mid journey, the same prompt in door and the same prompt in stable fusion. It's not a fair comparison. I get it. It's apples to oranges and all that. I get it, I get it, I get it. But I think it, it's, it's you know, pe people want to see that kind of comparison. So I figure I'll do that. And we're going to use the images uh, again, like uh, in the research paper. And we're also going to render them with the actual SD3 model and see how cherry picked these are. So first we'll look at this. We have a beautiful pixel art of a wizard with hovering text achievement unlocked. Diffusion models can spell now. This one looks, uh, well, looks kind of good. On the right here, we have this uh, frog. Frog sitting in a 1950s diner wearing a leather jacket and a top hat. On the table is a giant burger and a small sign that says Froggy Fridays. And uh, I mean, it looks pretty good. We have the, the frog. Uh, it's in a diner. It's wearing a leather jacket and a top hat. Uh, you have the burger. And the sign is uh, spelled correctly. Now, I don't know how many generations it took to get that. Or if they got it like 90% plus of the time. But I'm sure we'll see that once we generate it ourselves. And here we have uh, something I think is kind of cool. This translucent pig inside is a smaller pig. So spoiler, I did this in uh, some of the other tools and this was a hard prompt to get right. And the last one here, a massive alien spaceship that is shaped like a pretzel. So all of them kind of cool. And let's look at the first comparisons. So in this one here, we have old SDXL on the left. We have mid journey in the middle and we have Dolly on the right. Clearly in the SDX wall, while it looks kind of good as an image, the text is not working at all. We get some froggy, some frogoggy, frogoroggy, somali bird eyes. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, the frog, however, is wearing a leather jacket and a top hat in well, three-ish, or less of bowling hat, bowler hat, bowling hat, I don't know. It's kind of getting it right. Not in all of them. The burger is in front of the frog in three of the images. You know, we're halfway there. It's okay. The text is not okay. In the mid-journey mid one, we have this very mid-journey cinematic artsy kind of style. Froggy Fridays is actually working in, well, most of the images. The first one here is a slight misspelling. That one just says Froggy, but in general, I, I think it's, uh, well, it's okay. This one said Fridays here, a little little sign down here. This one's, uh, well, this one's pretty good. It's actually straight and everything, Froggy Fridays. We did get some Fridays and Froggy down here too. And in the Dolly one, the images look, well, they look kind of Dolly. We got Froggy Fridays, but it's, well, it's hardly working. In the third image here, we actually get a, a properly spelled Fridays. 
Uh, now, I, bear in mind, I have not cherry picked any of these. It's just the first four generations out. I can be lucky, I can be unlucky. Again, this is an apples to oranges kind of comparison. And we'll look at the SD3 ones in a bit. Pig here, translucent pig inside is a smaller pig, SDXL. It's just one pig, it is sort of translucent. Mid journey, well you're getting two pigs in some of them. None is actually inside the other pig. Dolly actually has, uh, all of the smaller pigs are inside the big pig. They're not really translucent, you can like, there's a part where you can see inside so it's, you know, I would say as far as understanding what the task was, Dolly kind of, you know, solved it in the best way, but also didn't, you know? I think Mid Journey in general in this instance had the most realistic looking images. Uh, looking at the wizard, we clearly have different styles. SDXL pixel art is very uh, minimalistic. The Mid Journey one is very artsy and the Dolly is uh, well, somewhere kind of in between. And in this instance, the mid-journey ones actually have the better text. We have Achievement Unlock Diffusion Models Now. Achievement Unlock Diffusion Can Spell Now. It's it's a long sentence and it's, it's you know, Models Now Diffusion Can Spell. It's it's getting there, right? Whereas in the Dolly one, the words are, you know, kind of in the right place, but everything's misspelled and all over the place. I should aim the lock diffusion your models can spell now. It's like, yeah, you can see that it tried, but I, it's not useful for anything. The good part is the words kind of get, you know, in, in the proper positions. You could go in After Effects in Photoshop and, you know, fix that. And SDXL is all over the place. It's, this isn't working. So compared to SD3, you know, that's a huge step. And here again, SDXL on the left, mid journey in the center and Dolly on the right. Uh, starting with the SDXL one, we got spaceships and they are really pretzels, like they're super pretzely. They're actual pretzels, probably not what we're looking for in the mid journey ones. They are getting there, like you're getting a spaceship and weird uh, uh, kind of dimensions and it's trying to like circle them up or, you know, piece them together like a pretzel. Not really getting the shape right, but you know, pretty okay just as an image. And for the Dolly ones, same thing, right? You're getting a spaceship that uh, goes into the weird shapes. And this one actually has a pretzel shape, but that's above the spaceship or so maybe it's a separate spaceship. So as far as um, these examples go that are cherry picked in the research paper, I will see what, what we actually get. Okay, guys, we are alive. Hugging face, stability, AI, stable fusion, three medium. We need to agree. This is me. Here's an email. I'm in this country. No. Yes. Agree. Once we have agreed to this, we're going to file some versions. You have some options here. You can, depending on what you want to do, you can e download the medium one. That doesn't include uh, the clips. If you're using Stable Swarm, those are going to be downloaded automatically. So that, that are the text encoders, which is the, the clip G, the clip L, and the T5. Those to go in the models clips folders. You can also download medium including the clips or the including clips with the T5 which go in your models checkpoint or model stable fusion folder depending on which UI you use. There's also some example workflows that you can use here so if you drop one of them in the basic one here for example this is a workflow that you get. You have a loaded checkpoint so this is SD3. We have the clips here. If you are using the SD3 with including clips uh, I would assume that you can just drag that and put that in there instead. And if you gen generate now, you would get, it says a female character with long flowing hair. And if we can get an output here in a second, that is uh, exactly what we're getting. Uh, default, we have a resolution of 1024 by 1024. We have a note here that says resolution should be around one megapixel and with height must be a multiple of 64. Got a basic prompt. Oh, this is interesting. The K sampler is by default set to 28 steps at a CFG of 4.5 uh, with uh, DPM++2M, plus plus which, uh, well, I like that one. I've uh, used Keras previously, but let's go with the SGM uniform and uh, see how that does, because that's what they uh, preset for us. And if you are using Stable Swarm, and if you're used selecting the model here, and when we press generate, we'll get some downloads in the background, which are the text encoders. 
and then you get this cute little SD3 text encoder thing here. So you can select clip only, T5 only, or clip plus T5. T5 only will get you a slight increase in quality at a massive resource cost. So clip only will get you, you know, pretty far. Now, I don't know what negatives they used uh, in our gener in the comparisons. So we're just going to leave that blank for now, which is probably, again, not a fair comparison. But um, it is what it is. It is what I have. Changes to four images. We're going to generate. We have a 1024 by 1024 resolution. I just started using this. So I might be doing something wrong, obviously. So we're getting first, we're actually not getting any pigs inside of the other pigs, as you can see here. So get generating, tell me in the comments what you think about it so far. If you're still watching this day one, you can use it on any comfy backend system that doesn't only include comfy and table swarm, I think some of the focus variants uh, you can use as well. I'm gonna keep playing with this in the coming days. So expect more videos on the topic, but uh, I'm gonna stop it here for now just so I can get this out and you can start playing with it. Have fun.